I need to get ready. But anyway, you know, who, who do we have, Derek? Who do we have? Let's just move we on. We have our lovely observer here with us, too. I wonder who it is. <laughs> We can't disclose. But anyway, so jumping straight into the rig draft, we're going to see Prestini going with the FTL jump. We saw kind of a little unorthodox thing that he likes to do uh, from yesterday, but it works out. I mean, I haven't really seen a, a big FTL jump play come in, but that just sort of probably deals in a line of that we need to be watching him at all times mm -hmm. because it just happens so quick. It's like a quick blink forward, but everything looking pretty routine on the side of Elevate coming off a rough loss against FaZe. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that. I mean... How, how, what, what game did it go to? Because honestly, I have, I have no clue. It went to, it took four maps. Uh, the first one was actually a forfeit. The players left the game early without the ref's call, so they didn't oh, have permission, okay. so they were actually handed the loss for that. Uh, and to the search and destroy, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was terrible. Terrible? I mean, it was a 6 0 in favor of FaZe. <laughs> uh, they looked uh, pretty slow going into it. Okay. Going into the uplink, Elevate absolutely thrashed FaZe. It was, uh, I believe, 13 to 14 was the okay. final score for that one. Yeah. And then going into the hard point, uh, it was basically just the Fate attach show. show. Yeah. It was it, it was just the attach. He ended up dropping a warden. He ended oh, up with like geez. 36 kills. So That's rough. he absolutely went off. He was just shutting down Zed, who actually had a breakout performance in the uplink as well. Tried to carry it over, but just all around, they did an excellent job of just winning those crucial gunfights uh, on throwback hardpoint as well. So like I said, it was just sort of. You see on Throwback Hardpoint how close of a map it is and how good the K-Bars and the Osas are actually going to be. But anyway, we're going to be jumping into Scorch. Haven't casted a Scorch Hardpoint all weekend long, so Ooh. I'm looking forward to it. Should be a good match. Of course, we have a, this is this year's resides a lot because this essentially decides who is the second team to come out of this Group A. Of course, Emmy is kind of already knocked out. Very surprising to see. Um, Gosu is currently obviously 1-1, one and, one and so is Elevate EU. Potentially, like I said, this could decide who is going to be out and taking that second spot in Group A alongside of FaZe Clan. There's a lot riding on this one. And of course, the guys over from Elevate definitely want to kind of make a storm because a lot, a lot of the EU teams have you know kind of risen. They've kind of done a little bit well. Orbit obviously getting knocked out. Infuse as well. Um, actually, Infuse actually ended up getting knocked out by this exact team of Elevate. So there's a lot resigning from the, from the European side. Team EU obviously likes to hold strong. And when you're talking about this technically online team, which I'm not sure if we can really call them that anymore. Yeah, I think you can kind of disclose that after beating FaZe. I mean, yeah, you, you don't want to say it's just like a lucky thing because well, it's, it's not it's luck, weird. it's on land. It, like. It's weird, right? Because obviously uh, Gosu ends up going up against Envy where they get destroyed. Massive 3-0 for them. Uh, and then we end up seeing Gosu crew go up against FaZe where they end up winning that one, I think, like a game five. So you're automatically thinking, oh, well, most likely then it's MVS who's the top team versus FaZe. Well, they play on the main stage a little bit later, and then, you know, FaZe obviously ends up winning. So it's kind of like a, a back-and-forth type of series or series of events that's kind of gone on in this group. And, of course, this map number one is going to dictate who is going to have a little bit of an advantage. So as we get ready to hop on board here, it looks like we're being, looking through the eyes of Shawnee as Elevate look to try to get an early game victory. Yeah, and you're going to see True Trophy systems go straight down, and Cluster Grenade is going to follow that up. He's going to be using the E-Red. This is something that the side of Elevate decides to bring out for at least the first hill. Uh, once they can't things going, can't get things going, they just kind of switch back to the K-Bar, the Osa, and stuff like that. But we're still in the eyes of Swan uh, Shawnee. He's going to be pulling out that E-Red. He's going to be able to find one. Spawns are actually going to be flipped over now. Going to be going in favor of Ghost, who the players from watch me. is going to be Christini and Gunless. Those guys had a great performance in every single hardpoint that we saw yesterday. Absolutely. Of course, players are looking out for the rotation. I mean, the back of the player's mind when it comes down to getting sponsors. The Elevate currently are in possession of those. It's Gunless. Looking every which way, just trying to make sure there is no one coming on a pinch. Well, there's Reedy, who finds one, trying to find the second, but Gunless is able to shut him down. So, off the first side of rotations, it will be, it looks like, it will be TGC with a little bit of a lead. We saw them with, on that opening flank. It's something that it comes down to uh, with TGC is the fact that they are always willing to challenge absolutely everything. Constant flanks, constant pushers. If they're one shot and there's three guys in front of them, they're going to push it, which can obviously, you know, be a major factor as, as a negative, but it can also be a positive. Catch your enemies off guard, but it seems that they are currently winning the rotation and winning this game as it stands. Yep, the big break came in there. Reedy picking up a nice two-piece. Now they're making the opposing team spawn all the way back out in that lab side, so going to be able to get some pretty good time off of this one. Zed going to be the player inside a hill. He's going to be the OBJ type player for the team, but Drama trying to make something happen here. He picks up a two-piece. He finds one more. He's on the hunt for the last player, and that is going to be Zed. Watson spawns right in on top of it. Throws one trophy system down, picks up another, but it will be shut down there. So a very close game as we are getting ready to rotate to the next one 25 seconds left on this so one more push going to be coming in from the Gosu crew before we head over to the lab hill. <laughs> 
everyone to four side. Of course, Zed can only inside of the hill. Drama is as well, but he ends up dropping. Something that I really like about Zed is when it came down to Hyper Games Black and Black Ops 3, he was always known as a top player, without question, probably the best slang player on that roster. And, uh, you know, obviously his roster changes kind of came about. You know, this team ended up forming up together. Uh, you know, many people obviously know a lot about Watson as well, Reedy and Shawnee. Shawnee actually recently turned 18, had an incredible performance actually at PSX in the Elevate lineup. Didn't see a whole lot of results, but he definitely kind of went off. But Watson, a very well known player as well. Back in AW, actually played for the DT team uh, back in MLG World Finals as well in the regular MLG Pro League. Uh, as well back on Aware too. So a lot of very well known names when it comes down to this European team. And it's not just names that are keeping them going, but it seems that their lead is starting to increase as they've completely locked down this hangar. And it seems that those players are only coming from middle and from hallway have not had any options whatsoever. And I talked about Zed being a main slayer. He's currently on a seven streak, while Watson is 12 and four on a five as well. Yeah, this is the slang, like you said, that Zed is capable of. We saw it in the uplink. It, trans it didn't transition over to the last hard point that we did see against going up against Faze, but right now he's 75 off of a Ward <laughs> Watson on a seven kill streak as well. Streak between the two. We're just going to stick between both of these guys. The Ward <laughs> is going to come into oh, play no. right now. So now the main focus for the Gosu crew is going to be we need to get this out of the sky. And then also you're going to see the Trinity Rockets coming in from Watson as well. These streaks are still alive and well. Let's see what they're going to be able to do. Zed is finally going to be shut down, but Watson is still continuing his show of 14 and 14. If you look at the mini-map right now, it's going to be going to the Gosu crew. One going to be pushing in through this observation deck. So let's see what they're going to be able to do. But these streaks are just halting them, just keeping them inside. Yeah, those streaks are going to definitely pay dividend when it comes down to it. But if you're looking at the side of Gosu crew, I mean, realistically, the guys who realistically go off for players like Gunless, I mean, I know you mentioned RC as well, but Persini, to me, is a lot of the times, at least in online scrims and online tournaments, he's been the main slayer for them. And it seems a lot of the hard points that they've lost, he has not really been able to show up. So. When it comes down to this younger team, I guess you could say, you know, obviously the twin brothers of both RCs and Pristini playing for Apotheon back at Call of Duty XP for the last year. Um, they've had a decent placements, but when it comes down to it, you've got to find a little bit of momentum in some cases, but it's hard to do that when there's obviously a warden in the air. Yeah, we're going to watch him just to maybe think Maybe he's not getting himself into these right positions with that NV4. Like we said, it's just a gun that you need to be smart with the gunfights that you pick. In situations like this, if this player spots him first and has like an oh, Osa he's or a K-Bar, he's not going to win that fight. So then maybe that's just something that RCDs, he might need to switch it up. He might need to go to that K-Bar, put the NV4 away, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Spawns up with that, and I think that's probably going to benefit you greatly. I think that maybe we'll start to see a lot more slaying come out of RCDs. Like you said, the NV4 can work out on this map, but just a lot of the angles that he was just picking right there, you're not going to win those engagements. And you'll see occasionally, Right? I mean, the TGC team, it's not like they're running out of uh, you know, creativity. It's not like they're not trying to flank or anything like that. It seems that every time they go on a flank, Elevate is always there. It's almost like Elevate knows exactly what they're trying to do. Unfortunately for the TGC side, they're finally going to get a little bit of a breath of fresh air as they're starting to bring this one back slowly but surely. It's still a decent lead for the side of Elevate as they are going to be on the early rotations potentially. This is actually going to be a very big gunfight between Zed and Pristini. Pristini not checking off to his right. Zed still going to be in the hill. Not realizing that a player is just to his left. Pristini able to win that gunfight. Arsenis and the boys from TGC are going to be on that rotation. But I believe Pristini is still in the back hill. He's still just waiting, waiting for that rotation to come through. Elevate's still on those early rotations, but Pristini needs to win this one. So despite the amount of time that he's holding inside of the hill, he's going to buy his team a few seconds to get on that rotation. It seems that Drama and the boys from TGC are only going to be down by about 50 points. A great break there from Elevate, and it was led by Reedy and Shawnee. Uh, let's see what they're going to be able to do to try to hold this, making the player spawn all the way on this lab side at the research area. So let's see what they're going to be able to do. Zed's going to pick up one kill. The flood is going to be start to come in now. Looks like they might try to go for a split here through Factory and then through the Catwalk. He's actually going to be out of the map. He's dodging the weaving, but Drama going to get that big break. The nice two-piece coming in, but Gunless and Pristini now going to clean it up to get this last bit of scrap time. Elevate players already looking at the map. There's just a couple there pushing, maybe just try to get a quick contestion, but they are going to have the spawns going in their favor, but the rotations are coming in now from RCs and Drama. This is going to be crucial to see what these guys can do. RCs yet again on the rotation, and when you look at the, the scorecard, just off to your right. I mean, 4 and 17. That is absolutely unacceptable when it comes down to the amount of matches that you're playing and the amount of, you know, results that kind of come from this. I mean, are absolutely huge. I mean, whoever wins is coming out of the group. Whoever doesn't is going down to the loser's bracket. You know, what we know so far is there are a lot of talented teams in that and that loses record already. I mean, Opti Gaming and Envy, just to name a few. <laughs> just to name a few, two of the biggest organizations <laughs> exactly, that we have in right? Call of Duty and the loser bracket. And they were talking about it. When was the last time Opti Gaming ever got knocked down into the loser bracket? It's been a while. You can think off the top of your head. So it, maybe it, back it, in the days when Form 1 Crimson weren't even on that team, yeah, like maybe Ghost or so? It's just crazy to think of, like, like what's happening so far here, MLG Las Vegas, but 
anything can happen, will happen, but the loser's bracket, like you said, is pretty stacked right now. You have a lot of good teams in there, so you definitely want to try to win this one set. Going to be the player inside of the hill. Let's see if he can get things cooking again. Was on a four kill streak, gets taken out. Watson is going to have the active camera ready, so just in case they need to break, he's going to be able to pop that one and get some easy kills and contestion time. He'll currently be in contested. And now the Ghost of Crew going to try to rotate early, but this has been the story, right? We've seen the Ghost of Crew rotate early, but then it's just been Elevate having role structured pushes to break this. And now same thing that we're seeing right now from Watson. He's getting ready to set up for this break, utilizing that active camo. He's going to spot one. And is he not going to be able to get the kill? Stop shooting at that player. Is he going to be able to clean it up? Nope. His teammate is going to be there for the assist. 225 to 119, and the score is rising for Elevate. Looks like they can have control of this, but the Flood is going to be coming in from Ghost. I believe we're seeing he's using ZTL jump in that particular situation. He's able to find a kill. Zaddy currently inside of the hard point along with Gunless needs to win this gunfight. Big win for Gunless, but he ends up dropping shortly after. So the amount of stacking that Elevate is doing has been absolutely up, up, me, exceptional as they only are going to need less than 20 seconds. Actually, 15 at this point shuts down the scare. But that's a few more score being added to his overall rig. And this is all but over as a few constellation kills will be awarded to the side of TGC. But doesn't really mean a whole lot at this point. I mean, only four seconds away. This would be an incredible comeback if they were able to make it happen, but I don't think it's likely. And if you're Arsides, you need to step it up. I mean, just this performance, yeah. like you said, being one of the main stars, 8 and 24, it's not something it's very unorthodox for him to see. I mean, overall, he, he hasn't been making that many big plays, but he's just been doing enough to help his team have success. But when you have somebody going 9 and 25, it's definitely not going to cut it. Usually, if you see somebody with that bad of a kill-to-death ratio, they're going to be the player that's going to be inside of the hills going along those lines. But right now, the setup they have is pretty nice, but Arsides going to a double push there by the players from Elevate. Now the pinch is going to be coming in. Pristini going to be able to find one. Reedy is going to be able to trade out a kill there on Gunless. Kills just going down all around, but it looks like they're starting to show some life here, but it might be a little too late. 35 seconds still to go on a hill that's usually contested the majority of the time. But Zed going to push in, and it should be Elevate taking this one. Yeah, they're still fighting for it, of course. Drama's still inside of the hill, but he does drop, and that should do it. So 250 to 154 will be the ending score of that Scorch Hardpoint. Of course, it was really an entire Elevate show throughout that entire game. You see Reedy in the kill feed definitely getting a few there as he ends up shutting down Drama. To, like I said, 250 to 154. Two minutes and eight seconds there of hill time. Shawnee, the young gun, absolutely showing his stuff here in this game, number one. And to be honest, I mean, when it comes down to Elevate, I wasn't for sure how strong they were going to be when it comes down to Hardpoint, but well, it is a loss, and that's obviously a major loss. I mean, they really didn't contest whatsoever in that first game. Ghost Recruit, that's not exactly a map or a game mode that they really prefer. I mean, they're more of a search and destroy type of uplink team, similar to, um, you know, past younger squads like TR and, and even, uh, you know, Elevate back in the day. So with that in mind, I, I don't think it's necessarily as big of, of a loss.